New York is known for a lot of things. Musicals, pizza and bagels, sitcoms about groups of friends in their 20s, and for those really in the know, this. That's steam. Anyone who spends enough time in Manhattan will be familiar with the clouds of steam pouring into the streets from manhole covers or tall orange and white striped pipes. Non-New Yorkers may have seen the steam in TV or movies, perhaps most famously in this opening shot of the movie Taxi Driver. But when it goes awry, the steam looks less like this and more like... This is footage of a burst steam pipe near Grand Central in 2007. This doesn't happen often, but when it does, it raises concerns. Steam has been a critical part of New York's infrastructure for well over a century, so much so that it even helped shape Manhattan's skyline. But is the technology outdated? Is it time to ditch steam altogether? To understand how steam rose to prominence, we have to leave modern Manhattan, head upstate, and turn back the clock to the late 19th century. Specifically, we're going to Lockport, New York, to the house of inventor Birdsill Holly in the year 1876. Prior to this point, homes mainly relied on fireplaces or coal stoves for heat, but they could only heat their immediate surroundings. Steam was available, but rare. It required a massive boiler. It was extremely expensive. So he thought, well, what if you had like a really big boiler in one place and you just connected it with pipes because, you know, steam can, can move really quickly. Holly tested the idea by connecting pipes in his house to a boiler 500 feet away in his backyard. And it worked. Less than six months after this initial experiment, Holly founded a steam heating company and started digging tunnels all over Lockport to lay pipes for the first ever district steam heating system. Holly's system quickly caught the eye of businessman Wallace C. Andrews. Along with engineer Charles Emery, the two plotted to bring district steam heating to a much larger and denser place. Manhattan. Andrews' New York Steam Company began digging trenches and laying pipes in downtown Manhattan in 1881. By 1886, it had 350 customers and five miles of pipes. But steam really proved its value in the winter of 1888. In early March, a blizzard pummeled the city with 85 mile per hour winds and nearly two feet of snow. This prevented the delivery of coal to people who relied on it for heat. But the steam? It kept chugging along just fine. From there, steam took off. Along with advances in steel construction and the invention of elevators, steam heating gave architects far more freedom of design. What's key about steam is that it could provide heating to buildings that were taller. You know, up until like the 1860s, New York just didn't have any buildings that were taller than just a few feet. So one big boiler in the basement would be fine. But as buildings got taller, you would have to build bigger and bigger boilers, and that was just kind of impossible. So what steam heating allowed was the development of skyscrapers. And the tops of those skyscrapers? Well, without steam, they would each need their own coal-fired boiler in the basement. And that would mean that the famous pointy peak of, say, the Empire State Building would need to be flattened to accommodate a smokestack. The same goes for the Chrysler Building, the Woolworth Building, Rockefeller Center, and dozens of other famous buildings. Go watch a, like a Charles Dickens movie, like Great Expectations, or maybe Mary Poppins. And if you can just picture the scene of the like London skyline, it's all those like dirty, sooty chimneys. And so that's what New York could have looked like without uh, steam heating. In 1954, the electric and gas company Consolidated Edison acquired the New York Steam Company and has been in charge of the city's steam ever since. Here's how it works. Con Ed sources its steam from six power plants, four in Manhattan, one in Queens, and one in Brooklyn. There, natural gas is burned to spin turbines, which power generators, to make electricity. Then, that pressurized gas is recaptured and used to heat boilers full of water to make steam. This process is called cogeneration, and it'll become very important at the end of this video. Anyway, 
Con Ed then funnels the steam through 105 miles of pipes that snake underneath Manhattan, from Battery Park all the way up to the Upper West and East Sides. When the steam reaches one of the 1,700 buildings that use it, it can be used for heating, cooling, cleaning dishes, humidifying art museums, sterilizing hospital equipment, and more. They're providing steam not to individual houses. They're providing like to the Empire State Building, to the World Trade Center, to Rockefeller Center. And there are not that many clients, but they're all enormous. New York's steam system is remarkable on two fronts. The first is its size. By miles, New York's pipes dwarf those of other cities in the US. The second is its age. New York's district steam heating system is younger only than Denver's, both of which date back to the early 1880s. But all this storied history comes with one major issue. Maintenance. Kind of has over 100 miles of pipe they're trying to, to maintain. And that's, that's where the problem comes in. The amount of maintenance required for this, you know, digging up streets, getting to the pipes, becomes, becomes very, very arduous. The pipes can fail in basically one of two ways. The first is simple corrosion, where pipes develop small holes that can grow over time. These you know, orange and white cones everywhere, it's like a leaked, a leaking pipe. It's a small steam leak, so it's not that much steam coming out, so it's, it's, it's relatively safe to still walk, walk by. But then when, when, those, when it becomes a, a big one, that's when you see um, like, like an explosion. The second type of failure is due to a phenomenon called water hammers. These occur when the steam traps fail to vent water from the pipes. Steam traps are basically uh, mechanical valves that have floats inside of them or some other device that senses the difference between steam and liquid water. And when it fills up with liquid water, these steam traps dump that stuff so that it doesn't travel with the steam. Because if you've got steam moving it through a pipe under the ground and it suddenly picks up a slug of water, which is not compressible, that water is gonna be like a cannonball. And when it gets to an intersection and has to make a 90 degree turn, that slug of water has the power to break that pipe. And that happens. And when that happens, it blows up the entire intersection. The footage from the beginning of this video is the result of a water hammer. That pipe was laid in 1924 and insulated with asbestos. The explosion blasted a hole in Lexington Avenue and spewed asbestos-laden steam and water into the air, ultimately killing one person and injuring 18 others. This problem isn't unique to New York, but the sheer size of its steam system compared to other cities makes it that much more likely to occur. Still, defenders of steam say that neither type of rupture or explosion occurs often. There's danger with everything, right? You know, there's, there's gas explosions, probably more often than more often than steam explosions. So, you know, there's always some there's always some level of danger um, to, to watch out for. Since at least the 1970s, there's been debate about whether to maintain the steam infrastructure or replace it with individual boilers heated with natural gas in new buildings. So right now, Con Ed is is pricing steam a little higher than they would uh, natural gas. So most of our most of our, our clients are they're okay with giving up some more space in the basement and adding a chimney, you know, to to spend uh, a little bit less on on heating the building. But recently, a new consideration has entered the conversation: sustainability. In 2019, the city council passed Local Law 97, which caps carbon emissions by the city's biggest buildings. Owners of buildings that go over that limit will owe a steep fine, so buildings that chose cheaper natural gas may end up paying more in the long run than if they went with Con Ed steam in the first place. And that is because of cogeneration. It's, it's actually a very efficient way to go, this district steam system. Right? So they're, they're basically recovering um, wasted heat. Uh, during their electric generation. There is a, there's going to be a carbon advantage um, to, to heating the building uh, with steam. To put a cap on this long and steamy story, in 1888, a freezing blizzard caused a major boom in demand for steam heating. 140 years later, our warming planet might do the same thing all over again. So what do you think? Should Manhattan stick with steam or scrap it altogether? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications.